Which, Which way is the wind blowing? Way? This way. All yeah. over the place. I've done this a few times. I was getting very agitated on Gardener's World where they had a woman who insisted on sitting by windy streams to record her pieces. And I was thinking the sound man there is going to be going <laughs> wild with fury. <laughs> I'm here today with Sarah Pierce from the OPAL project which stands for Open Air Laboratories and we're going to tell you about a really exciting citizen science project that's happening nationwide where you can get involved to collect important information about the health of British trees. It's very simple, we have a survey pack where you go out, you look at <laughs> trees in your local neighbourhood or when you go out for a walk or on holiday, wherever you are in the UK, we want to collect information about the health of trees, whether or not they have particular diseases and parasites and insects living on them. And all of this is going to be fed back into a national programme. Whoever you are, um, you can order one of these packs online via Sarah. Shall we stop until that goes past? <laughs> we now have the match of the day theme too. <laughs> really straightforward. Your pack will come and it'll have a nice little booklet explaining everything that we'd like you to look at. So we're looking at really simple stuff like describing the area where you're working so we can put it in context with everyone else's data uh, whether there's lots of trees around or just a couple if you're in a park if you're in a woodland if you're in your back garden wherever you want to do it uh, what species of tree you're looking at so it'll come with a lovely tree guide to help you identify what trees you're working on the tree guide <laughs> <laughs> you can hold it up right. Basically, we've got a tree guide that will come in every pack that will give you an idea of what a lot of the most common trees you're likely to find are. And while you can do this survey on any trees that you have in your local area, we're particularly interested in oaks, ash and horse chestnut because there are a few specific diseases and pests that we're looking for on those. So, you find yourself a beautiful tree like this one that Marcus is standing in front of by looking at the leaves we can tell what species it is and you can see that this matches the tree guide really nicely for an oak really important species in this country loads of them around and also lots of pests and diseases that we can look out for we have to first in our lovely little tree health survey booklet record what the area is like so we want to record where we're looking for the tree in this case you could just put a postcode down and other things about the area around the tree that might help to indicate what the environment's like so once you've sort of chosen a tree you've told us where you're looking at it we want to know about the size of the tree and shape so do you have your measuring tape Marcus I do <laughs> you can use any measuring tape but because Marcus is a bit of a tree snob as we all know we're going to use a proper diameter at breast height measuring tape to measure the girth of our tree shall we this is a, a DBH tape it's got two sides to it one side is measured in centimeters and the other side is measured automatically in diameter so you don't need to do any calculations you can tell the diameter of the tree straight away typically we measure the diameter of trees at 1.3 meters above ground about four foot above the ground and that's because the base of the tree can often have knolls on it it can often be spreading and it's usually only at about 1.3 meters that you get a nice clear cylindrical stem you can just go slightly above or below that for the purposes of the opal survey so we'll go right below where it branches two meters 26 so we'll record 226 for our circumference of the tree we also need a nice estimate of how tall the tree is and you've done a video on this before haven't you i have done a video on this before <laughs> So right now where we're standing, the height of the tree looks like it's about the height of the booklet. Right, Marcus's hand where it is right now is at about 10% of the height of the tree from my eye. So what we need to do is we need to measure from Marcus's hand to the ground and then we can multiply that by 10 to get the height of the tree. That is about 93 centimeters. So 93 times 10 means that we have a tree that's about 9.3 meters tall. We will now test this dun, dun, dun. technology. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's about there. Yep. I get 11.2 meters. So we have the distance to the bottom, the distance to the top, the angle between them, and that's the height of the tree. Pretty good. I think within two meters is pretty good. It's a good guess. So 
Our next, while we're standing here, is perfect because we want to have an idea of what the shape of the crown of the tree is. And in the booklet, it gives you a few examples of spreading or oval or different shapes that you might see with different trees. And then we need to go right in underneath the tree again, stand right by the trunk and look up. And we'll want to see how much of the sky is covered by leaves uh, and get an idea of how dense the canopy is. I have an instrument for that. Of course you do. <laughs> I would say about 75% of the canopy is covered. Where you're standing out a little bit further, it might be a bit less. And in this survey, we don't need, again, super precise details. We just want to know to the nearest 25%. So about none, about 25%, 50%, 75 or you can't see any sky at all, basically. How about you with your more precise measurement? It's not a super precise measurement. There are some uh, very accurate ways to do this. I prefer a simple hand instrument which is a curved mirror and you can see on the curved mirror it has a set of squares. If you imagine that each of those squares contains four dots, you count how many of those dots see sky and how many of those dots see leaves. I'm getting something like 26-ish which is about the same as you were getting for about quarter of the canopy is, is open to the sky. It's about 25% light penetration, matches up quite nicely. <laughs> Excellent! The simple <laughs> estimation matches the tool. <laughs> Now's when we start getting into the nitty gritty of it a bit more and we have to look at some leaves, <laughs> which Marcus always loves. In the first place, when we're looking around, we want to know, do we see any dead wood in the crown of the tree? So we have, we have one dead branch here but I would say less than 25% of what we see is dead wood on this tree because it's good and healthy. So now that we've had a look at the canopy, the size of the tree and whether or not there's any dead wood, we want to look a little bit more closely at the leaves. And in the first instance, we want to look for whether there's any discoloration on the leaves. So whether they've gone brown or yellow in spots or around the edges. And these leaves, I would say, are on the whole looking really healthy. There's a few little brown spots where they've been battered around or where insects may have tried to have a nibble, but on the whole, really healthy looking. Got a caterpillar that sort of sealed itself in there. <laughs> Sticking its head out, getting very angry. Yeah, it's getting not very happy with me for pulling it open. Lots of fun stuff growing and living and using the trees. And it's really interesting to have a look at what's there. Cool. Because we've looked at one of the three trees that we're most interested in, oak, ash, or horse chestnut, we also want to have a quick look for specific pests. On the oak, that is oak mildew, knopper gall, roller moth, and oak decline. And actually, I have a nice example of a knopper gall just over here. Basically, these form when a parasitoid lays its eggs in the developing acorns. Here it's effectively taken over what would have been the acorns. Like you, yeah. it's an invasive species from the Americas. <laughs> so, the, and, so Nopricol is an invasive species from the Americas. Marcus, do you know anything more about this? It arrived in the 1950s and is well established in British oak populations. It will damage the acorns and they won't be able to reproduce but the rest of the tree will be fine. When you finish that survey, all you need to do is go on our website and upload the results. The website is at www.opalexplorenature.org and you can also download all of our other surveys there as well. The eucalyptus, when it's small, invests in these big flat leaves that have a large area for photosynthesis, that catch a lot of the sun and that allow it to fix a lot of carbon very quickly. 